So you have questions on how to avoid this current situation we're in. Talking about maybe food shortages, maybe some other things. We're going to cover that in the next three to four minutes and hopefully get you some answers that you deserve. So you're asking yourself, hey, how in the hell do I avoid this current situation happen to me again? Oh, Lord, have mercy, haven't this been a mess? Well, here's a few things that you can do. I'm going to try to cover these relatively quick. All right, you want to make sure that you have, first off, an emergency fund. You want to make sure that you put 5 or $10 a week in your emergency fund and don't spend it on, you know, beer and dancers or something like that. You know, take those five one dollar bills and, you know, put them, put them in the bank or, you know, in your safe deposit box, wherever you can, you know, get a hold of it quite easily. All right. This way here, if something like this does happen again, and or if you have a family illness, if anything happens, a natural disaster. You have some extra cash on hand to help get you through if you cannot work. That's the first thing that you got to start doing. So number one is emergency fund. Number two, you want to start learning how to utilize some of the tools that are out there that you can get your hands on and it is relatively very easy to do. And all you have to do is just do a little research on. Now, we're going to start with, uh, I have three topics that I want to talk about. We're going to start with number three. Now, this topic would be your probably your most expensive and your most time-consuming product to start with. That would be canning. You have to buy the jars, you have to buy the lids, you have to buy, you know, all this different stuff. And if you choose to do the pressure cooking, you have to get the pressure cooker instead of doing it in the oven. I do not can. I do not know a lot about canning. I have people in my family that do and they like love doing it. Um, but as far as a beginner situation, I think that would be the, the most um, costly way to go to begin with. Number two, Marlar bags. Now, I love Marlar bags. I use Marlar bags with oxygen absorbers, and they are great. I mean, they, they work well. They do what they got to do. And to be perfectly honest with you, you don't have to go out and buy one of those Marlar bag sealers. Get yourself an iron and a two by piece of two by four, and you're golden. Period. It works perfect. Save the money. Don't give it to somebody else when you can do it yourself and save the money. So there's another route that you can go and it's really relatively easy. You have to do a little research online. I have done some videos on Marlar bags. You can go back and check those out if you want some of that information. Um, but you can really find out a lot of information online, exactly how many oxygen absorbers that you're going to need and what you put it in and what you don't put it in because not everything takes those. Now, you also want to make sure that if you're going to do the Marlar bags, you have some place to store them. A bucket works really great, um, but you know, you're going to have you know, all these bags and stuff, so it's not like just a, a cupboard where they just kind of stand and everything else. They get a little tipsy-turvy, so a bucket or a tote or something like that would work very well. And if you could get small ones, the ones that like slide underneath your bed, you know, down there where all the damn dust bunnies and shit is. Well, you can get those that go underneath the bed. Now, you, you didn't even have to do anything in your house to just slid right underneath your bed and you have food storage ready to go. Now, the number one thing that I think that everybody should try to get involved in, and because it's relatively easy, relatively inexpensive, and I think just about any person with a little bit of common sense out there in this country probably could do. And that's vacuum sealing. 
real easy to do. Uh, you vacuum seal your meats, you just extended it out for almost a year. Compared to throwing it in a regular freezer bag. Don't put it in a freezer bag, buy yourself a vacuum sealer. You throw it in there, no frost, burn, no ice burn, no icicles in there, no nothing. And the best thing is with your meat, if you forget to take something out for dinner, you take it out, you fill the sink up with a little bit of cold water, drop it in there, 30 minutes it's thawed. Boom. It's like magic. Wow, what happened? So, you know, you can do all your dry goods and everything else in there. You know, the only thing is, is like if you did like a soup or anything that's really watery, all right, you want to take and put it in your vacuum seal bag, but take that bag, throw that bad boy in the freezer. This way here, you know what? It freezes up solid. You pull it out the next day, then vacuum seal it, and you don't get a mess. Trust me, I learned the hard way. I didn't try doing a soup. It was just some vegetables and stuff, but there was a lot of liquid, and I had one hell of a mess everywhere. So take my advice. It don't work. Freeze it first, and you'll be just good. So that's the top three things that you, you, you can do to help avoid this situation that we're in right now, and this way here that you have food products and stuff that you can put up for you and your family. Now, falling back. You know, the number one thing is, is you want to make sure that you got an emergency fund to fall back on. Relatively easy to do. You just put the cash in there each week. Be faithful about it. You know, do what you can afford. If you uh, can only afford $5 a week, put $5 a week in there. If you can afford 10 put 10 in there. If you work extra overtime or something, throw an extra 10 bucks in it, you know. But don't touch it. Keep your little mangy fingers out of it because it's what's going to be saving you in a situation just like this. And this way, you avoid the situation we're in. Till next time. My name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And until we meet again, I'll catch you all on the flip side.